The discovery of oil in Nigeria was meant to transform the nation's fortunes by bringing prosperity. Nearly 70 years on, it has been the main driver of the economy, but at a heavy cost. A new report commissioned by the government of Bayelsa, an oil-producing state in the south of Nigeria, details the extensive contamination of its land, water, and its people's bodies from oil leaks and spills. And it's blaming the oil companies. DW's Flourish Chukura has been to Bayelsa to assess the damage. Okay, action. Green on the surface, but only able to bear bitter fruit. The community of Oruma is still suffering the impact of a spill that happened in 2005 when oil leaked from a shell pipeline onto farmland causing extensive damage to local ecosystems. The lush forest, which was once the main source of income for farmers and fishermen, has now become a contaminated landscape. This is one of the fish ponds that was affected by the oil spill almost 20 years ago. Now it used to teem with fish, but it has been neglected for many years because it doesn't produce anything for the farmers anymore. Now if you look closely, you can still see the oil on the surface and the water even still smells of crude. And even though we plant the oil inside, we still see the, the crops that we plant. So we feel very bad. All these places are condemned. Nobody can use it again. In a 2021 landmark judgment, a Dutch court found Shell liable and ordered the oil giant to pay the community compensation for the damage. Though most people are yet to receive the money they were promised two years ago, the case has paved the way for other challenges. The damage is irreparable. For us, it's the victory that we got, the precedent that we have been able to set you know, for, so that the others can still follow and the companies will be a little bit more cautious, a little bit more careful in, in, in carrying out the operations. The environmental pollution is not limited to Oruma. Almost the entire state of Bayelsa in the oil-rich Niger Delta region of Nigeria has suffered extensive damage for decades. The new report by the Bielsa State Oil and Environmental Commission presents evidence that toxic pollutants were found at many times the safe limits in soil, water, air and blood of local residents. The truth is if you go around the creeks in Bielsa, um, you weep for the region and for the states. Because the, oil, the level of damage these things are caused, it, it, it cuts across their social life, their economic life and all that, even politically. Activists and communities blame oil producing companies like British owned Shell and Italian owned Eni for not maintaining and securing the pipelines. The Commission's report says big oil must pay at least $12 billion for the cleanup. The companies argue that they are not responsible blaming the oil spills on saboteurs and crude oil theft. This report by Bielsa's Oil Commission marks the beginning of what could be a long legal battle. But Oruma's triumph in court after 13 years of litigation serves as a beacon of hope to the entire state of Bielsa. Right, let's discuss this further with His Royal Majesty King Bubarae Dakolo of the Ekpetiama Kingdom in Bayelsa. He's not just the monarch, but he's also an environmental and human rights activist. Welcome to DW News Africa. Now, this report from the Bayelsa State Oil and Environmental Commission paints a devastating picture of the environmental and human cost of oil pollution in the state. You've witnessed these horrors firsthand. What does this catastrophe meant for the people, of, for the lives of the people in Bielsa? Well, the truth is that we've been dying of it for the last 70 years. Our sustenance has changed. We're not able to fish or farm. And then, of course, we're not even employed in the oil industry. So that's like double jeopardy. It's been so bad. People die more of uh, oil-related diseases, for instance, like cancer than they die of malaria these days in uh, Bielsa State. 
This, this report highlights a series of failures, both on the part of the international oil companies and the regulatory agencies. It also suggests that these companies have behaved in ways they would never consider in their home jurisdictions. So how do you plan on holding them accountable? First of all, I want to make it as uh, visible as possible as a report to go around as much as possible. Let their shareholders, let their bankers, let their family members, let their relatives know that these men who work in the Niger Delta as uh, oil company workers who behave well or seem to be good people in their homes are indeed murderers back in Bielsa. Uh, they've committed so much atrocities that they must be held accountable. We believe we won't stop at just campaigning, but we want to solicit the support of everybody that has conscience in him, and then beyond that, perhaps also take them to court. The booklet is supposed to be a scientific evidence that will make them sit up. We'll be able to use that in court to have them convicted, have them compelled to carry out remediation and restoration of the land back to its pristine tranquility before they came. Where do you think the, the, the failures or the shortcomings are in the existing regulations and enforcement of these regulations in Bielsa, in the Niger Delta? Yes, first and foremost, these transnational companies are in the habit of behaving in what they call double standard. So they come to your jurisdiction and they literally pocket the regulator, they buy the regulator, they bribe the regulator and put in their pockets and then uh, tell a guided regulator to behave in manners that are not supposed to be uh, what a regulator should stand for. So to that extent, they knowingly take, took advantage of a regulator that doesn't have all the capacity to be a regulator. Note that Nigeria is a third world country and these are uh, companies that are coming from jurisdictions that are termed first world. So they're enlightened people, they know what it means to uh, pay bribes. And so you must have heard of the Halliburton uh, scandal, for instance. It was IOCs that paid bribes to Nigerians and ensured that they uh, uh, disorganized the system and got advantage over uh, the people of the place. Now, there have been decades of, of clamoring for justice over the damage that oil has done to the environment and people's lives in the Niger Delta. How will your, this current campaign be any more effective in bringing about justice? Oh, this one, we believe, will be as effective as the word effective itself. Because for the first time, scientific studies, scientific surveys have been carried out meticulously for years, 2019 to 2023 is a long time, about uh, three, four years, to ensure that every no stone is left unturned. So there are scientific reports from blood samples, from inspection of the places and so on and so Even though looking at the evidence just on ground, you see everything is, is too palpable. However, uh, you won't carry the ground to the court in England or in uh, Holland or anywhere else. So you have carried out studies that will show that what we are claiming is indeed correct. And uh, we're lucky that the government of Bielsa State this time took front stage in ensuring that uh, this report is launched in nowhere else but at the center of where most of these companies have their headquarters, where the key banks are, where the um, uh, shareholders are, and where the CEOs actually live in affluence. So we believe that this time it is different. Mm. And what about a home? How do you intend to educate your community about the findings of this report and, and the rights and the responsibilities that they have in the context of this crisis? Well, we are already used to it, actually, because, I mean, this is coming from our land, so we are used to the polluted environment. We know about it. So this report is only like the icing on the cake it is just uh, putting closure to what, we, what we've always known. And so it is not difficult for anybody else to understand what it is. It is more difficult for those of you outside to come to grasps with what has happened back there at home. So for every Bielsan, I think this is a known, it's a known, thing, a known uh, fact that uh, we've been polluted for 70 years plus. Because, I mean, for instance, every fisherman knows that uh, like uh, 20, 40 years ago, you could kill so much fish in uh, 10 minutes, 
And but for now, you go fishing for 12, 14 hours, and you hardly have enough fish for your family. So we all know it. Yeah, even in terms of skin diseases, in terms of rusting roofs, in terms of acid rain and all of that, it is visible. We all know that these companies do to us what they won't do in their homes. Even if you come to Bielsa State, for instance, looking at an oil company quarters where they live and work, it's like an El Dorado compared to the places that they've confined us to. Very pitiable. So on that note, then, considering all the damage that you've talked about and the effects are likely to linger well into the future, do you sometimes think to yourself that maybe Bielsa would have been better off without oil? Oh, sure. Obviously, we've seen oil as a curse than anything else. We have not benefited from it at all. The oil resources, about $3 billion so far, $3, billion, um, $3 trillion, have come out of oil. Most of which came from Bielsa State. And that has built Abuja, that has transformed Lagos, that has transformed London, transformed places in America, everywhere else in the world, except transforming Bielsa State and the Niger Delta. So as a matter of fact, it has just been pain, pain, pain. And more so, the sweet, clean air I used to breathe when I was a boy is no longer there for me to breathe. Now it is polluted air, scratching my back, scratching other parts of my body all the time, pimples everywhere, and so on and so forth. It's difficult to have up to five hours sleep these days in the Niger Delta because of the polluted air we breathe every day. Okay. His Royal Majesty King Bubare Dakolo of the Ekpetiema Kingdom in Bayelsa. Thank you very much for speaking to us. Thank you. I'm also chairman of the Traditional Rulers Council of Bayelsa State. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Shell sent us a statement about their subsidiary in Nigeria, saying it operates to the same technical standards as other Shell companies. It continues, illegal actions by third parties cause the vast majority of oil spills in the Niger Delta, such as crude oil theft and sabotage. However, regardless of the cause, the joint venture responds quickly to clean up when spills originate from its facilities.